All right, music fans, welcome back. Harmless Dave here talking real music in real time for a few real people out there just like you and just like me. I want to thank all the patrons that continue to help support this channel. Without you guys, um, don't know if I'd still be doing this. So I appreciate everyone who has stepped up. And uh, for those of you who want to help, it's pretty easy. There'll be a link in the description of this video and also how to become a YouTube member. Now, um, before I get to Joni Mitchell, uh, she won a Grammy last night, again, age 80 years old. Um, something's going on with Joni Mitchell, you know, but um, I'll talk about the politics of this and um, the boomers who are hanging on to everything. And I'm not a boomer, believe it or not. I'm close to being a boomer, but I'm not. Um, Bridget Kelly Band, Winter's Coming. This is an excellent blues record. Um, has nothing to do with Joni Mitchell and her sound, but I figured if we're going to go total organic, um, let's talk about a band with a great guitarist and a great singer. So please check this band out, the Bridget Kelly Band. And if you missed what I said there, you can always rewind and play it again. All right? <laughs> Just... Heads up for those who are reaching out to me saying, who did you say was this? And I'll be like, you could watch the video again. I, that would kind of help me too. So um, last night, the Grammys happened. Some of you don't care. Uh, most of us have tuned the Grammys out and uh, we've tuned it out for a very long time. Um, there were some interesting things that occurred at the Grammys. There was a duet. Uh, with Tracy Chapman and Luke Combs, who has recently done a version of Fast Car, and apparently that was really good. I didn't see it live, but people sent me messages saying, man, that was good. Um, that was a really good cover. Um, just well done by Luke Combs and certainly captured the spirit of the original, but sent it to a different place, sent it to a new place. And good for Tracy Chapman. For going out there with him um, in this divided world where people talk about things like cultural appropriation, right? So the country guy gets criticized for taking the folk song and turning it into a country song and putting his spin on it. Um, the song is a super well-written song when it came out. Uh, it changed the music world for a few weeks. I was there when it happened. And I was on the radio when it happened, and I was working at a classic rock station uh, that played a few new tracks, and we were playing that song. And every time we played it, the phones would light up and people would ask, hey, who the heck is that? Um, so anyway, Tracy Chapman and Luke Combs. Now, uh, moving on to Joni Mitchell. Now, Joni Mitchell is 80 years old. She is now ranked in the top 10 for guitar players, according to Rolling Stone. Whereas people like Neil Sean and Steve Lukather can't really get the time of day from Rolling Stone. They're just there. They had no influence on anything. Only Joni Mitchell. She's got all the influence. And her technique is so special and so different and so interesting that um, she is now, what, in their top five or something. I, I don't know, but I remember reading that and I was um, a little bit surprised to say the very least. Um, anyway, there always seems to be a political agenda going on. So Joni Mitchell wins a Grammy for an album that was recorded live at the Newport Folk Festival back in 2022. And she had a lot of help um, she had duets on there with various people that I'm not that familiar with, people like uh, Brandy Carlisle. Um, it seems as though both sides, I hate to use that phrase because that's a big song by Joni Mitchell on both sides now, but both sides seem to be using the other for traction. The younger artists can say, look at me. I recorded this duet with Joni Mitchell and Joni Mitchell to stay relevant um, has all of these people 
coming alongside and giving her music a boost. Now, I listened to a little bit of this album, and it's a very sloppy recording from start to finish. Um, there are some good moments, but then, again, um, the vocal pairings between Mitchell and these other people don't seem to mesh all that well. And let me ask another question. Is there a folk artist out there, an up-and-coming folk artist who recorded an album last year that was decent enough to maybe get a Grammy nomination that could have won? I mean, I don't know who all the other people were who got nominated, but this seems like we're reaching way out of where we should reach to put a woman back into the spotlight who, quite honestly, should maybe be in a nursing home at this stage. I mean, I don't know how healthy she is. I don't know, you know, her life and, and what she, I know she's out on tour, right? She's been touring, but 80 years old. And this seems to be something that I'm seeing not only in music, but in politics, right? There's a parallel here. If you're 80, okay, it, it's time to retire. It's time to grab, you know, the shuffleboard and just enjoy your life. And I'm sure if Joni Mitchell put some of her money away. Um, now, some people will say, look, Dave, you know, she's a legend. Why deprive people of seeing a legend? It's But this is the problem. The music scene has been in a holding pattern. Who's the next Joni Mitchell? Who is it? Is there somebody who's out there who aspires to be like Joni Mitchell, play like Joni Mitchell, maybe write songs? For me, Joni Mitchell was most impactful in the late 60s and early 70s, and that's a long time ago. And I think we, we need new people. We need new talent. Um, what I've noticed is there seems to be a political agenda rather than a talent agenda. There's got to be somebody out there uh, who is up and coming. And this is really similar to what we're seeing in politics right now. We've got an 81-year-old president who's running against a soon-to-be 78-year-old former president. The boomer generation's influence is really hard to overcome. Um, and it's it seems like unless people begin to look at younger talent and younger politicians, um, I think we're going to stay in the cultural holding pattern that we're in, in some ways. Now, again, I've been a critic of a lot of things that I hear from this current generation or even a couple generations prior to that. I believe that rock music in general took a big turn in the wrong direction in the 1990s, and we've never really recovered. Um, a lot of this stuff um, that keeps it going is like name dropping. I saw this guy perform. Okay, what did they sound like? Well, they didn't sound anything like they used to, but I saw them. All right. You know, Billy Joel just put out a new song. Good for him. It's a good song. I had a couple of people say they didn't like it, but I thought it was respectable. And um, was it worth the 30 something year wait? Probably not, but uh, it's good to have Billy and it's good that he still kind of sounds like Billy Joel in the case of Joni Mitchell and many other people who are continuing on. It's starting to get a little embarrassing. Now, if you're just concerned about, Hey, this is the last chance I'm going to see somebody like this. And I get it. If you're a super fan, I get it. That's your thing. Go see the person. I get people sending me messages all the time and I say, good for you. Good for you. That's good that, you know, that makes you happy that you get to see that. But I listen to this stuff and I go, Grammy? Really? This is a Grammy winning album, huh? Okay. You know, first of all, not a studio recording. And I know, you know, it's like Frampton Comes Alive. If you recorded a live album, sometimes the live album has something that the studio album just can't achieve uh sonically speaking but um 
you know, I would expect a bunch of really well-written new material, innovative playing, innovative singing, tapping into something maybe from the past, but moving it forward into the future. And that's, I guess, what they're saying, because she had all of these guests on the album, that that makes it, you know, cool in the year 2024. Uh, I, I just don't hear it, and I don't understand it. So in any event, that is my um, pre-boomer take on the boomer generation, which I believe is slowing progress down for everything, politics, music. Guys, it's time to get out of the way. It's time to step aside. Um, I know the money is good. That's that's part of this, at least the live performing uh, money. I don't know if this will boost album sales. Typically, when an album wins a Grammy, people take notice of it if they had ignored it. Uh, and maybe this will sell a few copies for Joni Mitchell. But bottom line is that's kind of over with. I mean, you're not getting a lot of money from streaming or any other way that you can uh, access this music. So um, I miss those days when a, when a Grammy show would be on, I'd be watching it. And, you know, and I haven't watched the Grammys and geez, I, I, it's gotta be 25, 30 years ago that I probably last paid attention to it. I hear about it the day after, and then I watch a clip here or there and um, I lament at the fact that things have changed this radically and the things that um, win Grammys. Of course, Taylor Swift won a bunch of them, right? I'm pretty sure. I read a couple of headlines. Taylor Swift, who is influencing everything, including the presidential election. <laughs> um, pop culture and politics. Um, see, and that's the younger generation, though. Even though I'm not into voting for somebody because of who um, is supporting them in the celebrity realm, um, that is still a thing. And people will follow somebody. And if they say, hey, you know, I like this candidate, then supposedly one in five of those people will go out and vote. And, and that is a very powerful thing. Of course, you know, we all know Taylor is working for the CIA and is a deep state plant and an asset, right? <laughs> I just, oh man, we have so many other things we could talk about and worry about, but here we are. So anyway, folks, before I go, this is my opinion on the Joni Mitchell thing, all right? Um, I'm a fan of some of her earlier work, but this is just like taking it out a little bit too far and resuscitating someone who, not that they were on life support, but I think we need to talk about new stuff in 2024 and the boomer stuff, 80 years old. Maybe 80 in some cases is the new 60. You know, we'll go the other direction. Oh, she's just 80. She could be here until 100. And we'll do the big album in 20 years celebrating her 100th birthday. And we'll have special guests on there who weren't alive when she was recording her most famous material. Um, here's Bridget Kelly. Um, this is the Bridget Kelly Band, a bare bones, no nonsense blues rock band from the great state of Florida. Please check it out. Check out her other albums. I think you will find them interesting to listen to. And uh, if you're just into some well-played music by good musicians, then there you go. That's the video, folks. Again, thanks for watching the channel. I appreciate it. God bless everyone. Please pray for peace in the Middle East. Um, we had uh, an outburst last night at the Grammys where I think it was Annie Lennox from the Eurythmics yelled out um, ceasefire, musicians for a ceasefire. So she's talking about, you know, putting down the weaponry and maybe having a discussion about how we can stop the fighting. I know people have very strong opinions on both sides of what's happening in the Middle East, but I think we can all agree that peace would be way better than war.